Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts, and today I'm here with AR15.com at beautiful ETTS in North Texas, and I'd like to take a moment to thank our ammo sponsor, Winchester Ammo, for providing us the ammo for this video. All right, let's talk about it. Speaking of ammo, tips for training in an ammo crisis. I get asked this question a lot in our classes, and most of the time it tends, it tends to be a pretty in-depth conversation because it's not just a simple thing, oh, just shoot this drill, oh, just do more dry fire. It's, it's like, it's, it's lazy responses, to be honest. So what we really have to do is we have to take a step back and we really have to look at our thousand foot view. And that starts by actually doing an ammo inventory. So when I talk about an ammo, ammo inventory, we need to separate defensive ammo from our training ammo. So we're not talking about defensive ammo, we're only talking about training ammo, and really how much training ammo do you have? Because that's gonna be significantly important in trying to figure out what to do from there. Now, most of the time what happens is we stockpile stuff and then we just kind of hold on to it, we don't do anything with it, and we kind of like go in these long periods of time where we don't shoot, we don't practice, we don't train. Unfortunately, when we do that, you also are gonna see a depreciation in your skill level. So all the work that you're doing to try to save ammo means that you're probably gonna see your technique go south. And maybe not like way, way south of the border, but it's gonna go south, all right? So when it comes to doing an ammo inventory, kind of take a step back and see what do I have to play with? And what I might suggest is consider what am I gonna do for an annual allocation of ammo. What do I want to, to shoot for my year? Is it a thousand rounds? Is it 2,000 rounds? 5,000 rounds? I don't know, but this is why it's important that you kind of take a step back and see what do I have to work with to begin with. If I've got 3,000 rounds, well you know what? I'm going to go ahead and allocate a thousand rounds for this year to train. And then I've got 2,000 in reserve and then maybe by the uh, end of that 12 month period I start to see ammo prices maybe level out, maybe even go down a lot more than I expected, and I can restock or even start to rebuild my, um, my inventory. All right, so really take time to do that because that is probably the first step, is knowing what do I have to work with. All right, now, after I've done an ammo inventory, I'm gonna have to do some sort of skills assessment to see where am I at currently? What is my current skill level? And that means that you're going to have to do something that is a comprehensive assessment, not just let me just do a, a, a common drill that you see all over Instagram or all over YouTube and it really only measures something in a very narrow band. Great. If I ever get in that type of a gunfight where this skill is going to be critical, I'm good to go. But what about everything else? Right, so you're gonna to need to look at a comprehensive skills assessment that not just takes into consideration um, the distance to the target. So like not just always work in close range, but I need maybe some medium and even some extended range in that. I need to do some different round counts. So not just do a standard defensive response. I need to change it up and not just always to a large target zone. Might need to go for a smaller target zone. I also probably want to add some gun handling in all of this. So um, years ago we created a, a skills assessment that we do in all of our classes and in my opinion, is one of the most comprehensive skills assessments. It allows me to really do uh, a great job of making sure that I'm not overlooking something, right? I get so fo focused over here that I let all this stuff go to waste or atrophy or just kind of don't even put the time into developing those skills or maintaining those skills. Now, once I've done that skills assessment, I can take a step back and now say, okay, I'm good here. I'm bad here and I'm okay there. So once I do that, I wanna sit down and I wanna set some realistic goals because that's the key. I tell people this all the time. I use kind of like a, a, a gym analogy. So you go into the gym and pick any type of barbell movement that you want. Could be a, uh, could be a chest press, could be the uh, bench press, could be the deadlift, could be a back squat, whatever the case is that you uh, are interested in. What I have found is that if I want to work really at improving one of those movements, I want to really work on the bench press, 
That means that I'm going to have to put so much time and energy into developing a heavy bench press that I'm probably going to see some atrophy in my back squat and my deadlift. And if I were to work on the deadlift, I'm going to probably see the back lift and bench press kind of slide downhill a little bit. And my point is that maybe trying to have that sub one second draw stroke isn't really the best idea. Maybe it's going to take too much time and ammo to sustain that a one second draw time isn't really realistic. Maybe I need to rethink that and maybe I want to consider maybe a one and a half second draw time. Maybe even a two second draw time. But my point is this, that when you sit down to think about realistic goals, part of realistic goals is also about maintenance and about sustainability. And trying to sustain a one second draw time means that you're going to be expending a lot of ammo. But we're in an ammo crisis. So how does that work? It doesn't. So sit down and be realistic with your goals. Now, once you have established some realistic goals, the next thing I want to do is design a training plan. Let's actually put some effort into coming up with a plan. And that plan needs to be something that I can follow. Maybe I make some adjustments on the way. I make an audible here and there, but I really want to stick to my training plan. I really want to put the effort into doing that. My point is that without a good training plan, you're just kind of just throwing stuff up and kind of seeing what sticks. I don't I don't like that. I want to have I want to have a good laid out roadmap towards my destination. And that's why training plans are so important. And luckily, we've got a video on training plans that you can read up on. Okay. Now, after you've got your training plan set up, the very next thing that we want to do is we want to be super accountable, right? If I set out to do this training plan and I go out to execute my training plan, I need to hold myself accountable to that training plan. In other words, if I said, you know what, instead of a one second draw time, I'm going to go for a one and a half second draw time. But all of a sudden, because of my ammo inventory and because of these realistic goals that I set, I'm now saying that, okay, instead of that one second, I'm going one and a half. But because of the frequency of my training, I'm not even able to do that. Well, don't just keep living the lie. Hold yourself accountable. Oh, you know what? With my frequency of, of trips to the range to sustain these skills, I'm not able to hold that one and a half second. Right? Because a lot of times we'll just kind of shoot and we'll shoot and we'll shoot and maybe, maybe we're shooting okay. But rather than hold ourselves accountable to some sort of minimum standard, we just kind of gloss over it. Ah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. But really, if we had taken a second to actually look and say, hmm, wait a minute, something's wrong here. I'm not, I'm, I'm not shooting at, at the peak performance level that I have because I'm not able to maintain the standard that I established in my realistic goals. So what does that mean? Well, that means that either I'm not training correctly or I didn't set a realistic goal. And that's why the standards and accountability are so important. I, I cannot tell you how many times that I've heard from students feedback that emphasizes the importance behind the standards that we have. We hold students accountable to these standards. And most of the time it's like, wow, oh my God, I, I've, I've never been held to standards like that. And it, it forced me to actually improve. That's kind of why we use them, because that's what you can expect. Now, one of the other things that I'm a big fan of, videotaping your performance, right? Set up your camera, your phone, whatever you have, and videotape some of your shooting drills that you're doing. And then you can take a step back and actually look at them and review them and kind of really get in there and see, oh, you know what? Uh, maybe, maybe I was moving too fast at this part of my draw stroke. Or look at the difference in my recoil impulse between shot one and shot three. Or, you know, all of a sudden I can see myself kind of popping over the sights to look at my target. Right? These type, this type of feedback that you get from what I like to call the one eye no lie, hugely valuable. All right? It's incredible. But, but more importantly, what it allows you to do is it allows you to review performance 
not just current, but in the past. So maybe you're in month three of your training plan and you look at your drill that you had set up in month one, and now you look at the video in month three and you kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison. You're like, huh, all right, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Videotaping is hugely valuable. Just, just again, too much of a good thing is bad. So use it where it's appropriate. So, you know, these are some suggestions for what you want, might want to consider for training in these kind of difficult times when ammo is hard to get or it's expensive or you don't want to dig into your stockpile, whatever the case might be, take a moment to really think through what I've talked about and hopefully what you'll see is the value behind this kind of thought process as it relates to just peak performance, achieving peak performance with what you have to work with. All right, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. I would love to hear your questions or comments. What do you do during this ammo crisis to try to maximize what you have available? I'd love to hear that. Until then, take care and stay safe.